Firmly tap the person on the shoulder to gauge their responsiveness while asking loudly if they are okay. If there's no response from the person, call 911. If you're not alone, ask a household member or a stranger to call for help and retrieve an AED. After calling 911, perform hands-only CPR by beginning chest compressions. Do your best to stay calm. Kneel closely beside the person who has collapsed and make sure they are face up on a firm, flat surface. Place the heel of one hand in the center of the chest between the nipples. Place the heel of the other hand on top of the first hand and then interlace your fingers. Position your body so that your knees are close to the person and your shoulders are directly over your hands, keeping your arms straight. Use your body weight to help you deliver compressions that are at least two inches deep. Push hard at a rate of at least 100 to 120 compressions per minute and make sure to allow the chest to recoil and rise completely in between each compression. For reference, the songs Stayin' Alive by Bee Gees or Baby Shark Dance by Pink Fong are around 100 beats per minute. Keep pushing and continue hands-only CPR until either you see a response or obvious signs of life or a trained responder arrives and can take over. Hands-only CPR can be physically exhausting for those performing it, so please take turns with anyone else that is present. While hands-only CPR is recommended if you are not comfortable performing rescue breaths, full CPR with compressions and breaths is more effective. We'd recommend taking a CPR certification course to become confident with this form of CPR so you're prepared should a real-life emergency ever occur. Now let's learn how to perform full CPR with breaths. Tap the person on the shoulder to gauge their responsiveness and shout, are you okay? If the person is unresponsive and not breathing, have someone call 911 while you assess if CPR is necessary. If you're in a public area, ask someone to find an AED. If you are alone, check for a pulse and breathing, then start CPR. Do your best to stay calm. Listen, watch, or feel their chest for five to 10 seconds. If the chest is not rising and falling, they are not breathing. To find a pulse, place your fingers on the side of the neck just under the jaw and beside the windpipe. Don't use your thumb. Gently feel for a pulse for five to 10 seconds. Make sure the person is on their back on a flat, hard surface. Remove any of their bulky clothing and kneel beside them. Place the heel of one hand in the center of the chest between the nipples over the sternum. Place the heel of the other hand on top of the first hand and then interlace your fingers. Compress the chest down more than two inches and pump for 30 compressions. Your rate or speed should be 100 to 120 compressions per minute. Keep a fast pace. After 30 compressions, move quickly to open the airway by tilting the forehead back and lifting the chin towards the ceiling. Pinch the nose shut and place your open mouth over the person's mouth and make a tight seal. Blow a breath into the person's mouth to make their chest rise. Allow the person to exhale in between your breaths. Rescue breaths should be one second long. If the chest does not rise, the person may be choking. Look for any foreign object. If found, CPR compressions will push it out. Do not put your fingers inside the person's mouth. After completing two rescue breaths, immediately go back to 30 chest compressions, followed by two more rescue breaths. Continue CPR until the person responds or an EMT or other trained responder arrives. Every two minutes, quickly assess if they are breathing or have a pulse. If they are breathing, you can stop CPR. If they are not breathing, keep going until help arrives. Two minutes of CPR is about five cycles of 30 compressions and two breaths. Because CPR is exhausting, allow a household member or stranger to take over. Take turns with one another. Continuous CPR saves lives. If you are all by yourself and do not have a phone close by, keep doing CPR for two minutes before calling 911. Return to the person as soon as possible and resume your CPR. Please visit our websites to learn more about caregiving resources and training.